morning, everybody. Hey. Uh, thank you all for joining us here. Um, my name is John Sullivan. I'm the executive director of the Free Software Foundation. I've been that since 2011, but I've actually been with the FSF for um, just over 10 years now. So that means I've been with the here for one third of the Guinea project. I remember when I first started was uh, right when we had the 20th uh, anniversary of GNU, and I, I uh, helped. I took home several misprinted GNU 20th anniversary T-shirts. I thought I would uh, bring it here and share, but I kind of forgot and left them at home. Um, very glad to have a microphone here because my throat is a little sore. I'm a little bit under the weather. It's been a, a tough week screaming at people about using proprietary software. Um, so. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, and I'm also not going to talk for uh, a full hour. Um, I just want to give this event some context and help introduce the individual hackathon projects that are here. Uh, but of course, the big address about the future of GNU and uh, what the priorities are going to be in the coming years will be this evening with Richard Stallman uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, I'd really like to welcome some of the people that have traveled very far to get here. We had uh, people come from Japan the UK, and of course all over the United States. So it's really great to have this opportunity to bring people together, and that's one of the things that the Free Software Foundation likes to do for the GNU project. You know, we don't uh, write much of the code ourselves directly anymore, but we serve as an organizational sponsor for GNU to help facilitate uh, and uh, improve the situation for the people that are actually writing the code. And of course, our goal at the FSF and in GNU is to have everything, we want all computer users to be able to do everything they need to do on any computer using only free software. And that's been the goal since 1984. So it's not just to produce some good free software, um, it's not just to produce good software, it's to make it so that all the software that we use on all of our computers is free. Um, and that's one of the things I think that, that distinguishes us and has distinguished GNU for the last 30 years. These freedoms obviously matter to programmers because uh, programmers are the people that are most likely to want to actually look at the source code of a program, know what that is, modify it, um, and then maybe share the improvements they make with their friends. But we can't stop there uh, because most of the world isn't a programmer. Uh, but at this point, most of the world is becoming a computer user between the tablets, the phones, um, laptops and, desk and desktops even still spreading around the world. Just about anybody who's a citizen of a large part of the world is using a computing device um, during the course of their normal day. So we're not just out for freedom for programmers. We need the freedom of these computer users to be respected as well. Just to make sure we're on the same page about what that means, we have the four freedoms which provide a clear definition of what free software is. So free software doesn't mean software that you get without charge. Okay, Skype is not free software just because you can download it without paying any Free software is characterized by four things. The first is freedom to run the program for any purpose, um, helpfully called freedom zero, since programmers always start calling from, uh, counting from zero. Freedom one, the freedom to study how the program works and change it to do what you want it to do. Two, the freedom to redistribute copies, give them to other people. And three, the freedom to share even the ones that you may have made some modifications to with other people. So with that context in mind, I'd like to welcome you to this free software event of the GNU 30th anniversary. Um, I want to thank some people who helped make this possible, uh, especially Justin Dove and the rest of the Student Information Processing Board at MIT. Um, it's been awesome. To, we really wanted to have this event at MIT because GNU started um, and has long been had a strong association with MIT. So this definitely seemed like the best place to celebrate the anniversary, and, and uh, SIPP really made that possible. Uh, also, Aleph Objects. Um, company who makes two Respects Your Freedom certified 3D printers. Um, they supported the event despite having to deal with some flooding in Colorado you might have heard about. Uh, and we'll get to see their contribution um, later on this evening uh, at the reception. I want to mention the organizers of the events that are going all around, going on all around the world. Um, at the end, at last count, we have an event occurring on every inhabited continent. Uh, some big events, some small events, but they're all great. They all provide an opportunity for people to get together and talk about GNU and free software. Now, we're not calling Antarctica inhabited, but I, I learned recently that Mozilla actually claims to have 80% market share in Antarctica. So apparently we, we don't have them on every inhabited continent. Uh, 
Uh, also, I want to thank the FSF staff. I'm really proud of the work that they've done to pull all this together. There were a lot of long hours put in over the last couple of months to get this together on a relatively short notice. Um, I hope you end up being as proud of their work as I am. Um, all the GNU volunteers that helped out as well. We had, uh, especially Jason Self, who's the chief, uh, chief, uh, junior webmaster, he's not chief, believe me. Um, and Ars Siddharth, who is a uh, uh, volunteer working from India, I believe, that helped uh, a lot with the um, GNU 30th webpage, which I, I thought ended up being a nice presentation of the event. And of course, all the people that are working on this whole thing since 1984, I mean, it's a, a staggering thing to think about, uh, to add up all of the people that have made small contributions and big contributions since then. We owe a lot to those people. And of course, uh, Richard Stallman. Uh, shown here, posing peacefully with a katana, um, which somebody mailed to the office for us uh, as a weapon to fight the evils of proprietary software. But being a nonviolent man, he refused to pose in any aggressive manner with the sword. Uh, and we want to thank him for sending this message to a Usenet group 30 years ago, yesterday, 30 years and a day ago. Um, and this kind of cool view of the message is actually produced by Joey Hess, um, a free software hacker that writes a lot of the code that we use. And he's constructed this thing which gives a real-time view of Usenet as it happened uh, many years ago. So if you were watching yesterday during the day, you were actually able to see this message come up um, in real time uh, at the same time it was posted 30 years ago. Some things haven't changed since this message. A lot of things haven't changed. Um, for example, uh, we happen to be hiring right now, and that made this uh, quote stick out, stick out to me. I'm looking for people for whom knowing they are helping humanity is as important as money. I view this as a way of enabling dedicated people to devote their full energies to working on GNU by sparing them the need to make a living in another way. Uh, that's still the way that we look at it, and we are currently hiring for a GNU system there. So if you would like to make your living working on GNU um, and sparing yourself the need to do it another way, please send in an application. Also, donations, uh, some things have changed. Um, this passage made me laugh a bit. One computer manufacturer has already offered to provide a machine, but we could use more. One consequence you can expect if you donate machines is that GNU will run on them at an early date. The machine had better be able to operate in a residential area and not require sophisticated cooling or power. Uh, well, I can tell you, actually, if you can send us a machine that is not capable of operating in a residential area because it's so powerful, we would love that. Uh, so. This part has changed, um, but uh, we still welcome donations of machines that also work in residential areas. Uh, our work is still funded um, primarily by individuals and grassroots contributions. The best way that you can support that uh, work in that way is to join the FSF as an associate member. Um, we also have some new items available in the GNU Press store with the GNU Anniversary logo uh, and some nice new GNU Polo shirts. You can support the FSF that way. Please do make sure you're on the newsletter list to receive our regular updates. Um, and we use that sponsor, we use that support to put on events like this, um, also to provide infrastructure for GNU. We do shell hosting, we provide um, web hosting, version control repository hosting. Um, we help GNU developers get to conferences from time to time. We help uh, organize and fund the GNU Hackers Meeting, which is an event that's occurred um, every year for a while now in Europe and once in the United States. So your support for the FSF does in turn help the development of the GNU project. Um, and I hope that we'll, this is the first hackathon that the FSF has actually put on um, that I can recall. And I'm pretty proud of that. Although if you think about it, it's kind of funny that we're calling this a hackathon because we've sort of been running a 30 year long hackathon. Um, it's kind of like Software Freedom Day where you tell people every day is Software Freedom Day uh, at the FSF. But um, these events are, are great for bringing people together and giving people a chance to meet face to face. Um, and also um, I think we've got some people here that aren't yet affiliated with any project, um, who will be able to find something hopefully they enjoy working on. So about attendance at this event, I want to highlight um, a couple of things. We have an anti-harassment policy, which is available on the website, but uh, we want to value everybody's attendance here. So we value your attendance. We also value everybody else's. So uh, be respectful of each other. And if you witness anything that is inappropriate, or if you experience something inappropriate, please do talk to Libby, myself, or any of the uh, FSF staff you will see wearing a branded piece of clothing in your hackathon room. Uh, we have another little uh, bit here, these photography stickers that are on your name tag, possibly. Uh, this is in order to help the event respect people's privacy in terms of photo taking and posting online. Um, you may want your kids' baby pictures to be online for eternity, but not everybody here wants their photo uh, posted.
So that way, so if you see a green sticker, that means go. If you see a yellow sticker, that means ask. If you see a red one, that means just go. Uh, and so our photographers that are walking around taking pictures know about this, and I hope if you're taking a uh, picture, you also respect that. Uh, people have been using GNU30 as a hashtag to post about the event. Um, I think uh, it would be great if people would take the opportunity of this event, which has a strong theme focusing on uh, addressing the dangers of network services as an opportunity to try out one of the federated microblogging platforms that's out there. We have uh, GNU Social, which is present at the hackathon. Um, we also have uh, Pump.io, which is another um, free, free software system for uh, posting small, very small messages. Um, if you are also using Twitter, then uh, consider posting it to it via a GNU Social plugin um, or other free software clients. That way you don't deal with proprietary JavaScript. So the theme of this event, um, in terms of the projects that are here, well, all the projects are free software. Um, a lot of them are GNU projects, but not all of them. All of them are awesome. Uh, and a lot of them are addressing a lot of the, the recent revelations about bulk surveillance with the NSA monitoring people's phone calls, um, emails, revelations about uh, back doors being found in proprietary software, especially Windows and Skype. Um, so you'll see a lot of projects here. We, we definitely made an extra effort to invite projects that were able to focus on addressing those dangers. Now, free software doesn't guarantee you privacy. Any software can be exploited. Any software can be manipulated or include bad features in it from the beginning. Um, but at least with free software, you have a fighting chance against this sort of thing. You know, because you're using code that you can inspect, or if you don't know how to read the code, you can get somebody else to look at it. And if it's doing something you don't like, uh, it's very likely somebody else doesn't like that also, and so a new version can be made that removes those malfeatures and removes those or removes the back doors. Um, so a precondition to addressing this threat as a society is use of free software. You know, we've had free software programs for a long time also to do things like encrypt your email um, you know, with, with GPG, uh, or uh, well, that's the main thing you can use, um, but a lot of the most popular free encryption technology is free software. Implementations of HTTPS in your browser. Um, most of the ways that people actually protect their privacy are based on free software, and what we need to do is expand that. So we're excited to have projects here that are working to make a difference in that area. And we're also here to expand GNU uh, and the free software movement. Um, like I said at the beginning, this, it's not just for programmers. Uh, it's, uh, it's for everybody. Um, and it's important that we remember that, that GNU wasn't started as a free version of Unix because RMS really liked Unix. Okay, it's, it's not actually that he thought it was awesome. Um, it was started because it was the best way that you could see at the time to write a free software operating system that anybody could use. And we have to keep that in mind when we're, when we're considering the, the necessary, um, much needed expansion of the free software movement to cover the globe. I mean, personally, I love the shell, the command line, and I will be happy to raise your ear off about how I hate that all laptops have touchpads now. Um, but that's not the only, well, even though a lot of people agree with me, um, and a lot of us are here to work on software with that you know, agenda in mind, we have to remember that this movement um, isn't about particularities of software, and it's not about the interfaces to the software. It's, uh, it's about the fundamentals of free software. And we're gonna need a lot of different kinds of free software in order to appeal to the, all the people freedom that we want to help protect. So that's why we're welcoming everybody here. Um, and that includes uh, uh, people who aren't going to be here to work on code, but people who are going to help out. We need your help with uh, giving feedback about the software as a user. We need your help with uh, writing, helping to write instructions that are useful for other people to follow, like you followed. Um, we need help uh, communicating and advocating for free software. And we need help organizing all of those jobs and the coding jobs. Lots of opportunities here with each project to help out, both in terms of code uh, and in terms of those kinds of things. And that's how this whole thing started. It was one message to a, a Usenet group uh, calling for help. You know, and all the people that responded to that uh, are what made this happen. So a lot of those people wrote code. A lot of those people wrote documentation. A lot of those people shipped t-shirts and tapes. Um, a lot of those people wrote you know, very moving pieces about their use of free software. Uh, it was important to us and very important to RMS that this event not be just a party or a celebration. 
so unlike my own 30th uh, birthday party, which was largely a, a very destructive event, um, we wanted this event to be productive. Uh, we wanted to make sure that this celebrated not just what's happened with GNU, but uh, also um, to, to turn the page and, and head towards uh, producing some new software. So um, with that being, uh, with that in mind, I don't think my talking more is very productive. So I'm going to turn the floor over to some of the projects that are here to do productive things. Um, everybody, all that, the leaders of each project are going to give uh, a short introduction to the projects, which would say three to five minutes, and let people know what they're working on, what the project is, uh, where they, and uh, what they might use help with. And uh, as you're giving those updates, please do remember that uh, we have a nice number of people in this room, but we also have a lot of people watching, hopefully, at home. Um, if our awesome uh, streaming setup using only free software and free formats is working as it seems to be. Um, so uh, keep in mind that those people are there as well, and we've been um, encouraging people to join this event by IRC, uh, so that people who could make it to this um, spot in Boston, or who understandably maybe didn't want to cross the border with their sensitive personal information, uh, can still participate at home. So do mention your, your online participation as well. Uh, the first project, alphabetically speaking, is Commotion Wireless. We have Commotion here. Do you want to start us off? Um, can I ask you to come up? Because the whole streaming thing. We just have this microphone. Yeah, maybe we should. Next project. So I'm Thomas Gideon, I'm the Director of Technology at the Open Technology Institute. And one of the projects that I support there is the Commotion Wireless Project. So if you've read the guide, you know that it's uh, about uh, building uh, networks using free software tools. Uh, but for us, it's so much more than that. It's a toolkit that allows you to use whatever devices and resources that you have available. John's point about running free software on all computers is very, very It has evolved in very interesting ways, so it's not merely about connectivity or even just adoption uh, by communities of uh, their own controlled communications infrastructure, uh, but we brought with us some ideas and some things that we would dearly like some help with in the realm of applications and services. We'd love to see some of the other projects that are here um, come and talk to us a little bit about how you might package your applications and take advantage of some of the APIs and libraries that we're building for promotion to make it easier to share and find uh, free software applications and services on promotion networks and will be very easy to find at least today if you're interested in any of the GNU swag we're sharing with the GNU press folks and have GNU stuff so just come on by check it out and we'll happily tell you about uh, the project ideas point you at the promotionwireless.net website which has our issue tracker uh, all of the, the tasks and things of interest all the time. after this will be Ganesh. Uh, but uh, I'm going to talk about um, F-Droid, which is, uh, this will be run just tomorrow on Sunday, and it'll be run by um, William uh, Peeker, who's one of the FSEP uh, staff people, our outreach and communication coordinator. Um, F-Droid is the, 
about is that a couple of things. Ftroid is, for one thing, a uh, popular marketplace of free software Android applications that you can use instead of the Google Play Store. Um, everything in the Ftroid marketplace is free software. Um, and there's also some nice other benefits and ways to screen out uh, applications that have advertising or do uh, other things that aren't strictly wrong by free software standards, but you may um, enjoy tweaking. Uh, so, and then Ftroid is also the actual application that you install on your Android phone in order to access that market. And it's the server, uh, which is released as free software. So using the Ftroid server software, you could actually host your own Android marketplace um, with your own software. And so people have been doing that for their businesses and organizations. So at this event tomorrow, um, you can come by to either, first of all, just learn how to install Ftroid on your Android phone. It'll run on any Android, uh, actually phone or tablet. Um, so you can just come by and, and we'll show you how to get that up and running and uh, help you find some cool applications to get started with. Uh, you can also come by if you want to help uh, research applications that should be in the Ftroid marketplace but aren't yet. So one of the problems with Google Play Store is that they don't indicate the licensing of the applications that are in there. So it's actually kind of takes a little bit of legwork to figure out if individual applications are free software or not. So that's a way that uh, you don't have to have um, much of the way of technical knowledge or, or interest in order to help accomplish that. All you need to do is you know, want to read about some software that you could possibly install on your phone. Um, and then the last thing that'll be going on there is actually learning how to submit those applications to the Ftroid uh, marketplace, which is done using Git and uh, just a plain text file where you enter in some uh, data about the application. So feel free to stop by for any of those things tomorrow. Is that all day tomorrow? Or is that tomorrow? Yeah, all day during the hackathon times um, tomorrow, Sunday. Uh, and next up is uh, Rob's boy from, uh, oh, and Ftroid IRC is uh, Ftroid on Freenode. And we do have um, one of the Ftroid developers will be online and available during the hackathon hours tomorrow, so that'll be a big help too. So I'm here basically working on the Ganache project and stuff. So um, Ganache is basically a legally reverse engineered implementation of the Adobe Flash Player technology. It's about an eight or nine year old project at this whole point. And everybody knows about Flash, so I don't have to explain it too much. Um, so, But a lot of our goal for this weekend as far as Ganache is, um, we've just checked in a whole bunch of uh, recent work for RTMP, which is a proprietary network implementation that Adobe uses that we reverse engineered. So because now this is brand new, it's like I think we finally committed it two weeks ago, the, this weekend is working on the next Ganache release. Um, we need some help updating some of our translations. We could use some help on a bunch of other boring stuff. So if anybody wants to help me work on getting the next Ganache release out this weekend, uh, you know, we'd appreciate the help and stuff like that. Lots of testing on different distributions because we're into portability pretty heavily and stuff like that. Um, and funny enough, part of the other thing I'll be doing is merging in the Ganache port to Android.
is software we wrote in 2009 to power Libra FM. Uh, we're really proud of the success we've had with that. We now have over 127,000 active users and about a million songs in our database. But we haven't made it look nice since 2009. So if you want to come along and help me make it look nicer and get the next 127,000 people to use it, that'll be awesome. We have a pretty active IRC channel, Libra.fm on Freenode. And we're also working on our federation support this weekend. So come along or join, and we have candy. So there's that. Sixty-six one fifty-four. ISC channel is Libra L I B R E dot F M on free node. Hi, I'm Chris Weber. Uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Media Goblin. Uh, we are a GNU project. Uh, if you don't know about us, we are a media publishing system for the web uh, that think you know images, audio, video, uh, actually fairly extensible. Um, we are going to be having a hackathon. We have actually a number of things that we're going to be doing, uh, and it's also partly dependent on what happens with people showing up. Uh, we have uh, um, a lot of code that's come in this last summer. Uh, we could actually use some help reviewing and testing that code and making sure it's ready for merge. Um, so if you're willing to do that, that would be super helpful. Um, and you don't necessarily have to be a programmer to, to test it out and try to check it, but that would be great. Um, we could also are planning on doing various hacking on the code itself, and we welcome the contributors of all kind. If you're interested in doing documentation or graphic design and stuff, uh, that's all super awesome. Um, some of us um, have these little Goblin Force badges that uh, uh, our wonderful contributor Ava 3D printed. Uh, she works at Alif Objects, which is uh, sponsoring this, and uh, um, and yeah. Uh, so we are also going to be in Pound Media Goblin on irc.freenode.net. Uh, and what's our room number? Sixty-six one sixty-eight. So come by and join our little Goblin Force party. Hi, I'm, I'm John Eaton. I'm the originator and uh, current maintainer of GNU Octave, which is numerical software that aims to be compatible with MATLAB, if you're familiar with that. Some people still use computers for numerical computing. Um, uh, well, uh, we have a lot of work to do. We have about 500 open bug reports. Um, I like to think of that as means, it means we have users. So um, uh, I will be on uh, the Octave channel on Freenode all day if I can get connected. And um, I'll also be at the Boathouse for dinner. I think one other person signed up right now, and uh, I hope to have a lively discussion there about funding for free software development if you're interested in that topic. And we're, we were at the core booth. Which room is that? Okay. I'll try to find it. 156. GNU Social is the new name for the software previously known as StatusNet or StatusNet. And uh, we are developing some free software social networking tools. Uh, the FSF uses it. Our big goal uh, for this weekend really is to launch a public site for the GNU project. So if you are a GNU project user, come down and uh, just stop in for five minutes. We want to have a quick chat with you and just kind of get you using it. Um, but it's cool. And it's all written in PHP, and it's pretty easy to get started, and pretty easy to kind of get some contributions going. So if you want to do that, come down. We're in the same room as before, which I don't know the number for, 66, 154. Cool. All right. IRC, we are in social uh, on Freenode. the next one on the list because um, this is actually a remote only participation but uh, GNU GUIX which is a uh, functional package manner package manager um, for installing software and, and maintaining your system is uh, it's a relatively new project but they just had a major release um, this past week uh, 
partly timed to coincide with the anniversary. So a lot of people are really interested in the, the, the different approach that they're taking to um, installing and maintaining packages for the software that you use. So if you want to um, stop by and check that out, I believe they are in pound GUIX on Freenode. Uh, but uh, you can double check that. The web address is there. Um, and they're also listed on the uh, hackathon page online with the information. Um, next up is uh, Tahoe, LAFS. Hello, my name is Zuko, and I'm one of the leaders of the Tahoe LAFS project. I'm going to take a minute to say what it is. It's a secure distributed storage system, and I like to say it's kind of like BitTorrent, but it has an upload as well as a download, um, but that leads to all kinds of interesting things. And um, the main plan we have for the hackathon is to uh, finish certain patches which help
started, including um, we need to make it a lot faster. We need to improve our test coverage, which at this point is shameful. We need to do that both through network simulation and testing tools. We've got some sort of written in Python, and we need to improve our unit test coverage. So that's going to be trajectory hacking. Um, we need to um, fix up little bug reports this weekend because there's lots of little simple bug reports that nobody's gone to. I'd also like to, if anybody's interested in hacking on new and exciting cryptographic stuff with Maven, that would be a fun thing for us to do together. Um, or even just basic programming stuff like parallelizing our crypto implementations, because right now we do not take enough use of multi core on servers. Uh, if you are interested, if you are not interested in hacking the same, it's you know, not, not really safe enough for you, then another good area to hack on this weekend would be what we call pluggable transports. That is a super, super encipherment layer that we support to evade network censorship by making Tor traffic or any kind of traffic look more like some other more innocuous seeming kind of tra traffic and fool the sensors. So uh, that's about what I'd like to work on this weekend. We'll be in 66168 in the same room as Tahoe and the Crypto Party. So if you just want to head around and talk about cryptography stuff, 66168 sounds like the room for you. Thanks to the FSF and everybody for having us. Hi, everybody. I'm Zach. Um, I'm a campaigns manager here at the FSF, and I'm going to be running the Crypto Party, which is also in 66168, so down the hall past the food. And basically what we're going to be doing is getting helping people get started with GPG encryption. So for anybody that's not familiar with that, it's an email encryption system. So you can use it to make it harder for the people to read your email and make it harder for the NSA to snoop on us. Um, if you want to come by, we'll be glad to help you get started with it. And if you are already experienced with it and you have any tips, um, come by and share and just chat about it. We're working on creating some materials. So if anybody has like really good guides they want to share, or like some new interface that they like for it, I'd love to talk to you about it. And we'll be there for the whole time. Just drop in. Thanks. So yeah, the crypto party will be today, um, and then uh, after it will be tomorrow, and all the other projects I believe are running uh, the full time, Saturday and Sunday. Um, and we have the uh, space in the building. Um, is uh, people can stay here until midnight tonight if uh, people want to come back to dinner, come back from dinner, and, and stay late and finish the thing they started during the day. You're welcome to do that. Uh, and uh, otherwise, you can go home and catch up on some sleep. We will again provide breakfast tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, one thing that's not in the schedule but is also true is that there will be snacks in the afternoons. So snacks and coffee once you come back from lunch. Uh, I do want to mention the dinners that uh, um, were mentioned in a couple of the talks, but on the wiki there is a uh, list of dinners that have been set up tonight with different themes. Um, they should all have kind of a list of who's coming so far, but if you want to have dinner with some folks that are here tonight, um, check out that list and try to do it earlier rather than later so that people you know, know to update the reservation number and know how many people they should be looking for. Anything else you need to add about the? Yeah, the dinner list is on beaverplanet.org. It's uh, Junior 30, I think is the name of the page, but you should be able to find it there. Um, I also, um, John from uh, Octave mentioned that uh, wanted to have a conversation about um, free software funding, and I did want to throw out there that in addition to supporting the FSF, um, there also another great route to support free software development is to give to these two particular projects if they have a way set up for you to do that. Um, some of the projects uh, are accepting donations via the FSF. Um, Kidu Octave, uh, Media Goblin um, are both in that category, and uh, but other people have their own donation system set up, so please do consider supporting the individual projects in addition to help make that development happen. We had the introductions from the projects just now. Um, at the end of the event, we'll have an opportunity for the projects to come 
uh, kind of report back about how things went, um, talk about the work that got done, and how people are going to stay in touch after the event to continue working on things. Uh, and I believe that should be on the schedule for tomorrow. So please keep that in mind as you're working on your project this weekend, and what might be interesting to share with the group and update people on at the end. Another question? Do we have the room numbers on? is what is GNU? Well, GNU is not a board game. GNU is not a pop rock guitar player. You're a GNU guy. GNU is not the government of national unity. South Africa. GNU is not a guidance and navigation unit employed by Raytheon. <laughs> Although that unit may run GNU Linux. GNU is not a nonprofit bookstore or poetry cafe. Uh, although I'm a bit jealous of their GNU and I think we might have to steal that. And, um, replace that uh, coffee with a, a, a laptop. GNU is not. snowboard company. <laughs> Gnu is not on the internet at the moment. <laughs> Gnu is not a snowboard company. software, and that's what I, I hope we'll make some progress on this weekend. Uh, I think that is all we have for this morning. We can uh, just move to the hackathon rooms. Um, lunch will be, we have a lunch break planned at noon. Uh, that's on your own, so um, if people want to you know, work through lunch, or you, know, you can follow your own plans um, by whatever schedule you want. Uh, Richard Solomon's address will be at 5 p.m. here. We will have a, a short reception after that as well. And then people can head off. I think the dinner reservations all start at 7.30 tonight. So people will need to leave before 7.30 in order to get there. But we will keep this reception open until 7.30. Sure. So just to repeat, there is a lunch today for uh, participants and people interested in the um, GNOME Outreach Program for Women uh, and Mentors. Uh, so that's a program that the FSF has supported for um, the last couple of years. It's uh, done a lot to bring some great contributors to free software. So if you're interested in hearing more about that, um, uh, you can join um, Karen and uh, uh, Rain for that lunch. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody. If you have questions, most of the FSF staff is wearing a red shirt uh, or other FSF clothing you can find. And we have the information desk will remain open in the lobby of the other building. Thank you. Happy hacking.